Hello, hello everyone. My name is Lisa. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. We are going over my September TBR. I can't believe it's already September. I can't believe the end of summer is basically here. So here you can see me trying to squeeze in a bunch of summer reads at the very end. So let's go ahead and go over the books that I'm thinking of reading in September. Please let me know what you're thinking of reading in September. Maybe you can influence me to change my mind because the winds are ever changing for my TBR anyway. So let's go ahead and get into the books. Like usual, we're going to start with the ones that are more certain and then we'll get into a bunch of maybes. So firstly, I'm just going to like, not to jinx myself, even though this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to first go over these. So I have these designs, hopes really, uh, that I can do a publisher taste test video for Coffee House Press. I know I've said in previous videos that I have the subscription for this season and I love Coffee House Press in general and I want to do them as a publisher taste test video, but because I have the subscription, there's a part of my brain that's like, I should read every book for this season subscription for that video to see like what it's like to read a whole season's worth of their books and find overlapping themes and talk about the publisher in general, which I do think would be very fun and I do wanna do it, but like here are the five books <laughs> and I'm worried that I won't be able to do that in one month. So we shall see. We're, we're saying these ones I'm gonna read. The two that I know I'm going to read this month are In Vitro by Isabel Zapata. This is translated by Robin Myers. And this is a nonfiction about the author's experience doing in vitro. And I think this is supposed to be pretty heavy, trying to shine a light on infertility in general, but also the specific process of in vitro. So very excited to read this. It's one of my five star predictions, and I'm definitely going to get to this one at least this month. The other one from them that I know I'm getting to this month is A Cowardly Woman No More. This is by Ellen Cooney, and this is also a five star prediction for me. So these ones will be getting read, even if I can't manage the others. This one is a science fiction novel, which I'm just in the mood for something different genre wise. And this follows a woman who after lots of years kind of being skilled and toiling away at her profession, a male coworker of hers is promoted over her and he is less qualified. So she basically says like, screw this, I'm over it, I'm leaving. And then ends up getting roped into a job on a spaceship and traveling to outer space. So that sounds like such an interesting start and premise to me and very excited to read this one. So that is A Cowardly Woman No More. The other books for the subscription this season that I'm hoping to get to are When the Hibiscus Falls. This is a short story collection by M. Evelina Galang. And this is all about Filipino and Filipino American experiences. Um, specifically, I should say women and their ancestors. That's really all I need to know about this. I know it gives a couple examples of the stories you'll find in here, but I don't even need that. Um, it does say that the stories are talking about the complexity of family and community as well as the Filipino American identity. So sounds fantastic. Gorgeous cover. Um, that's another one that I'm hoping to get to. Next up is a poetry collection, and that is The Heiress Ghost Acres by Lightsey Darst. This says that it's examining her Southern ancestry and the legacy of white womanhood. Um, so she navigates pandemic isolation and political upheaval. Darst reflects on how history, both familial and national, shapes parenting and interrogates the history in search of more ethical, transformative ways to mother. Hmm, that sounds very interesting. So... Yeah, that is the poetry collection from the subscription this season that I'm hoping to get to. And lastly, we have The Plotinist, A Tiny Little Thing by Ricky Ducournay. And this one is about um, a man who gets arrested by a robot called The Plotinist and is put in a prison cell. And he starts reflecting about his past. It's supposed to be an allegorical tale 
about kind of class, tyranny, conviction, and the enduring power of imagination. So that is the Flotness. So those are the five books for the Coffee House subscription. And hopefully I can get all these read in the month and do a publisher taste test video for them. So that's the plan as of now. Now the rest, except for one, are all maybes. So the other one that I need to read is The Swimmers by Julie Atsuka. This is published by, I want to say Knopf. Yes, Knopf. Um, so this one was from my book haul revisit video. In those videos, I always pick one of the ones I haven't read yet and put it on my TBR for next month. So this is the one that I chose. And it follows kind of two different POVs, let's say. One is a collective POV about a group of elderly people who all swim in the same pool at a community center that has a crack in it and the sort of like feelings that that brings up for all of them. And then it also follows uh, a mother and her daughter. The mother is um, in the community and her daughter is estranged from her, but her daughter comes back to help take care of her because she is falling ill. So I've heard this is heartbreaking and I'm going to cry. So I'm preparing myself for that now. And that is The Swimmers by Julie Atsuka. Next, we get into the maybes. So firstly, we have We Do What We Do in the Dark by Michelle Hart. This is published by Riverhead and um, it came out last year. I picked this one up because I was hearing rave reviews about it and definitely wanted to see what I thought. It follows a protagonist named Mallory who's in her first year of college and she's reeling from the recent death of her mother when she encounters the woman. She sees her for the first time at the university's gym and is immediately entranced and soon they meet and they're sort of drawn to each other. It's very magnetic and they start seeing each other in secret. So I think this is going to be a pretty messy. You can sort of see the entwined bodies on the cover, but yeah, very excited to see what I think of this and it sounds plotty and I'm ready for it. So that is We Do What We Do In The Dark. Next up we have Weather Girl. This is a romance. Um, I'm wanting to get in a romance for the summer because I haven't read one yet. And this one is by Rachel Lynn Solomon and it's published by Penguin Random House. This was gifted to me by some lovely friends and they gifted it to me because the general plot and setup of the book very much follows the same kind of setup, meet cute, if you will, that my partner and I have. So I'm excited for that element to it. Also, it takes place in Seattle and we live in Seattle. This one follows a TV meteorologist and sports reporter who scheme to reunite their divorce bosses with unforecasted results in this electrifying romance. So yeah, I'm, I've been wanting to kind of get into some more genre fiction lately because I've been reading some heavy stuff. This will be perfect and yeah, a great summer romance to end off the summer season with. So that is Weather Girl. I also know that Rachel and Solomon has a new novel coming out called Business or Pleasure and I'm also very interested in that one. This will be my first time reading from her and if I like this, I will be picking that one up as well. So that is Weather Girl. Next up we have The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This is published by Flatiron Books. Um, I actually got this for my mother-in-law one year and then she read it and liked it and sent it over to me to read. And this is a thriller mystery that takes place in Australia. So again, kind of that summer vibe. And it's about two brothers, I believe, and one finds the other brother dead. And then I think people might start suspecting him and it gets into their past history and family secrets. So sounds very intriguing. Again, like a plotty, fun, wild ride for me to get lost into. Another way to kind of send off the summer. On that line, I also have a book that I recently just hauled and that is The Summer Book by Tove Janssen. This is translated from the Swedish by Thomas Thiel and published by New York Review of Books. 
And this one, as you can tell by the title, is kind of celebrating summer as well. So I think there's a lot of great nature writing in this and that's really why I'm interested in picking it up. But it also has this duality of narrator. So it follows Sophie who is a six year old and her grandmother. And Sophie is just starting, starting to kind of like awaken to life and have all these new discoveries. And her grandmother is sort of coming to the end of her life. Um, and yeah, it's just their time together, sort of reflecting on all the joys and sorrows that you experience in a lifetime. And I just love that. I think I'm going to love it. So that is the summer book. And lastly, we have another one that I just hauled and that is Far From the Matting Crowd by Thomas Hardy. This is the Wordsworth edition that I have here. It's gorgeous. I mean, look at this so cute and this is a classic that I have not read yet I know it follows a strong female narrator who is kind of progressive for her time wants to do more than just kind of be a housewife and gets into a love triangle between two men who are vastly different and she's trying to make the right decision on who she's going to marry. I'm so in the mood for something like this, so I can't wait to get to this. And that is Far From the Matting Crowd. That is the TBR for the month of September. Please let me know if you've read any of these and if so, what you've thought of them or if there's any that you're interested in. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.